Imagine this, you meticulously care for your orchid, providing perfect light and humidity, yet it struggles. The culprit? Hidden water quality issues. This is where a pH meter becomes your orchid's best friend, as well as your best friend, and here's why. Tap water and even rainwater can have a pH outside the ideal range, which is 5.5 to 7.0 for orchids. If the pH is higher than 7.0, it hinders optimal nutrient absorption, leading to deficiencies and stunted growth. This does not mean that the water is not usable for orchids or is a threat for the roots as long as the water is as pure as possible. And we will get to that in a minute. On the other hand, pH that is too low, as in too acidic, can damage roots as well as limit essential mineral uptake. Consider the pH meter as your water whisperer. It gives you eyes as to how your water is going to affect your orchids positively as well as negatively. This handy gadget takes the guesswork out of watering by measuring the pH of your water precisely. Knowing the exact pH allows you to adjust it either with a pH down or a pH up, or also using readily available household ingredients like lemon juice or baking soda if necessary, but I would advise against using these forms of pH down or pH up for any larger quantities of water that you're preparing to water your orchids with. Ideally, these cheap household ingredients are better for only small water quantities because you will need more of them to raise or reduce the pH, which will add other nutrients into the mix that you may not want to have administered to your orchids. I recommend that you use a pH down or pH up specific product, which will not add any additional components into the water. They are highly concentrated, so you don't need much of them for the pH level you are targeting to be reached. So, consistent monitoring of your water with a pH meter ensures you're providing water that promotes optimal health for your orchids as well as the targeted nutrient uptake. Getting the right pH for fertilizing or supplementing purposes will help prevent issues like yellowing leaves, stunted growth, root failure, poor flowering, and more because it optimizes fertilizer effectiveness by ensuring nutrients are readily available in the correct pH range. The peace of mind knowing you're providing the perfect foundation for watering orchids successfully and without risk is well worth the effort and initial possible headache of getting used to using a pH meter regularly. Because if you were in two minds about the necessity of a pH meter, thinking that you don't have a large enough collection of orchids and it is not necessary for what you do when watering your orchids, then I hope that this video encourages you to upgrade your orchid care routine and eliminate any possible risks to your orchids because it doesn't end with a pH meter for just watering or flushing your orchids without any nutrients added. When it comes to adding nutrients into your water, the next gadget that I would highly, highly recommend is a TDS meter. Before I get carried away, well, let me qualify that. I already got carried away. But before we go on with the next segment of the video, thank you for joining me on the patio. This video was brought to you courtesy of Orchid Ninja Jose Josef because he quite rightly said that this is an important topic and needs to be addressed once again. So thank you, Orchid Ninja Jose Josef. I hope that I'm doing your request justice. You see, I want to get the theory behind the benefits of a pH and TDS meter out of the way before I'm going to show you some examples to show you how these two gadgets can be the make or break of your orchid watering and fertilizing routine. Know that I appreciate you for giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel at any given point in time throughout this video. Thank you so much. So now that we've done a blitz review of why a pH meter is a must, no matter the size of your orchid collection, let's look at how the TDS meter becomes your double whammy to getting it right when it comes to fertilizer levels and why these two gadgets go hand in hand. Now imagine this, you're showering your orchids with love and fertilizer and supplements, but instead of thriving, they are starting to show signs of stress. That culprit could be hidden fertilizer buildup. This is where a TDS meter becomes your eyes into just how much fertilizer is going into your orchids, and here's why. Fertilizers contain salts. Those are total dissolved solids, or abbreviated TDS, which are essential for growth, but excess buildup can be harmful. High TDS levels can lead to nutrient burn, damaging roots, and hindering water uptake. 
Symptoms for something going wrong include as well yellowing leaves, stunted growth and wilting. A TDS meter is a handy gadget that measures the total dissolved solids in your water before and after adding fertilizer. Measuring before adding fertilizer is important. Again, examples to follow. So by monitoring TDS levels, you can dilute your fertilizer accurately to ensure it's within the safe range for orchids. And the safe range for orchids is personal. It is orchid dependent, which includes the size, is it in active growth, how many leads are growing, which equates to vigor, or is it about to bloom, etc, etc. Getting the fertilizer or supplement concentration right prevents any buildup of salts and ensures your orchid receives the right amount of nutrients. You see, going by manufacturer's instructions is something I always advise against because more often than not, the concentration is too high. Orchids have a very slow metabolism and for that reason, they don't absorb such high quantities in one go. They can only take up so much the rest being left in the pot to either degrade organic media further or form crystals if the orchid culture follows the principle of a wet dry cycle. One can do a rule of thumb when it comes to manufacturer labels and have the recommended amount or even be on the really safe side by only applying a quarter of what is suggested. And if that does not require a TDS meter because your orchids are doing well, then for the purposes of measuring the quantity of fertilizer, a TDS meter is not necessary. But what if you want to target a specific nutrient in form of a supplement like calcium nitrate or Epsom salt to counteract any deficiencies your orchids may be showing or in the event that you get new orchids and they are showing signs of deficiencies? It is at that point when it comes to supplementing that a TDS meter is a must-have and with that the precise dosing to the right parts per million can be guaranteed. So, in summary, a TDS meter helps you avoid overfertilizing, a common mistake that can harm your orchids. It also allows you to optimize your fertilizer and supplemental strength based on factors like pot size, orchid variety, and growth stage. It gives you peace of mind knowing you're providing the ideal balance of nutrients for your orchid's health. And investing in the time and care of orchids, plus how much your orchids cost, a TDS meter is a big step towards getting your collection to thrive. Now, as a reminder, TDS meters measure the total dissolved solids in a liquid. TDS refers to the total amount of dissolved inorganic and organic matter in water. In simpler terms, it tells you how much stuff is dissolved in the water, but it doesn't tell you what the stuff is. What you have in your pure water when measuring the first TDS value prior to adding any fertilizer or supplement is non-identifiable, unless you go to your water provider and request a breakdown of what all is in your water. Even with an RO system, there are sometimes parts per million in the water, but we don't know what they are. But you will know what you put into your water when you check the ingredients, the makeup, so to speak, of your fertilizer, and of course your individual supplements. So if you want to practice with your pH meter and TDS meter, start with your tap water. I always recommend to use the TDS meter first because you can skip the step of checking the pH of your water if the TDS value of your tap water is too high. Without even checking the pH of the water, Water, you can add your fertilizer or supplement and take another reading. In order to get the actual reading of how much fertilizer is in your water, however, you need to keep your first TDS value in mind and deduct that from your reading after you added your fertilizer. That final number will give you your true parts per million as to your actual fertilizer concentration. Only then, when you're happy with your fertilizer concentration as per the parts per million, will you need to check the pH to see if the pH is within the ideal range for optimal nutrient absorption. If it is between 5.5 and 7, you're good to go. Sometimes a product can drop or raise the pH of your water, which is relevant after the fact. Unless you're super curious for your own interest, then checking the pH before applying the fertilizer or supplement is not necessary. Now, if you want to take your curiosity a step further, take any water or specifically the water you use for orchids. Leave that to evaporate completely and you will have total dissolved solids left behind. Here's an example where I left an exaggerated high parts per million water with Epsom salt concentration to evaporate. To show you what TDS actually looks like, if you try it with your orchid water, you 
may get little to none at the bottom of the container and that would be ideal. Or you may have a little ring where the solid stayed behind after the water evaporated. I am a very visual person, so I hope that this little example shows you what TDS really are, even though this is exaggerated, but I hope you see what I'm trying to show you here. If not, the comments are there for a reason. Ask away. I'd be happy to elaborate. Now let's get on to some practical things. I want to show you my example. My tap water TDS, its pH, and compare those to my RO water TDS and its pH. This is not to say that RO water is the best, but it will show you why in my situation I need to use RO water. Your tap water may be just a-okay as long as the value is no higher than 100 parts per million. Let me tell you and show you why I say that. To the left, the unmarked glass is just the same water as my faucet plain water, but I've reduced the quantity of the glass so that I could put the pH meter inside and not have to faff around too much, seeing as it takes quite some time to actually get a stable pH reading. That's just to make things a little bit simpler for us. As mentioned, we start off with a TDS reading. We're not even going to bother with a pH. And very quickly, you can see the value of that. This water doesn't even have fertilizer in it. Those are my parts per million what comes out of the tap. That is alarming. And if I didn't have a TDS meter, I would probably think, okay, now I'm going to add my fertilizer and suddenly our parts per million explode into concentrations that are not feasible for many of the orchids we grow. This is an eye-watering scary value. I'm not saying that your water is like this, but it is a perfect example of why I always say get a TDS meter. It gives you eyes. And because in the early days of my collection I was seeing real issues with my orchids, I thought, okay, fair enough, let's get ourselves a TDS meter. Saw what I saw, a reverse osmosis water system was a must, because by comparison, my reverse osmosis water comes out at approximately 11 or 10, roundabout there, and that is a good day. Now I can add fertilizer to my RO water and I come out with a reading that is so much lower than my plain water from the faucet. It has fertilizer in it, but remember what I said earlier? We need to deduct the initial parts per million that were there without any fertilizer added. That was 11. So our true parts per million of fertilizer in this concentration would be 563. Now that we've established a fertilizer level in our water. Just for funsies, let's go back to the pH of my tap water. We're just going to leave it in there for a little bit. Got a lot of jiggling to do until it settles down and shows us a number that is stable. And behold, we have 7.9 in my faucet plain water. Now we can do the same thing with our plain RO water just to see what's going on there. And once again, the pH meter takes its time to come down to a value where it settles and then gives a reading that is pretty stable around 7.0, 7.1 pH. And then after our TDS levels are fine and we have what we want in the water for our orchids, that is when we test the pH. And of course everything has to stabilize again, but my fertilizer is such that no matter how many parts per million I put into my water, it will stabilize into the optimal pH range, which once again is 5.5 to 7.0. However, the big biggest, best, and most important nutrients are within the 6.5 to 7 range. So this for me is perfect. Remember right at the beginning of the video, I said that the TDS is measured by organic and inorganic particles that are in our water that cannot be determined unless, of course, we add fertilizer, then we know what our ingredients and nutrients are. Well, just for funsies, check out my biology experiment here, which is a container filled with algae, but also with vanda roots. And just to prove a point about something I mentioned also earlier in the video, that orchid roots do not struggle with any water above 7.0. As long as the water is pure, I'm not saying clean, because you can see the state of my container here. Let's measure the TDS, even though we can only guess what all the components are that are making up this biology experiment and see how high the TDS is in this water that I only change every six or eight months. I know, shocker, but it proves a point. So in this container, when I change my 
my water, I only use RO water to fill it up completely. Then I just refill with either fertilizer plain or any other kind of supplement. If I only have a small quantity left in a bucket and I don't know where to put it, it goes into this container. So you can see that my parts per million are around about 500. That is not very high considering that this is my enormous Vanda. And the only other water that goes in there is rainwater if and when it rains. But even with all the nutrients and the supplements and everything, I put in there because I don't know where else to put it. Let's check the pH because you see how that goes up and up and up and up. No matter what is in there as far as nutrients are concerned, the orchid roots are not absorbing any of it. So it doesn't really matter what's in that water. But what is important is that all the roots are doing soup. Herbly. I have root tips growing everywhere. I have root tips attaching. I also have root tips growing up on the roots that are ancient, <laughs> as old as time, and they connect all the way down and end up being the water roots of my Vanda Chow Praia. Isn't that insane? So when we talk about water quality for our orchids, as well as pH and TDS, the important thing is to have as pure water as possible. And the important thing for nutrient uptake is the right pH. If the water is pure, the roots will grow, but they will not absorb the nutrients that you give to them. And that is why the two gadgets are super duper important for us to do the best we can when it comes to providing nutrients and supplements to our orchids. I hope that this video was to the point, easy to understand, not so long-winded, and I hope I did Orchid Ninja Jose Joseph's request justice. If there is any, any doubt, confusion, or anything you want me to clarify, please address everything in the comments. I am happy to be more precise down there. In the meantime though, thank you so very much for watching. Let me wish you a beautiful day on the condition though please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye!